someone who calls himself, well, I'm going to call him Guy. He uses the name God is indeed incredible. And the reason why he does that is because if you address him, then you have to ad agree with him by addressing him, and I don't. So I'm just going to call him Guy. Guy uh, claims that this uh, blog post that I'm looking at now is his proof for the existence of his God. I'm going to uh, read his proof and then tell you why it's not. Uh, it's called The Accuracy of the Gospels. He uh, wrote this on July 1st, 2011. Quoting from him now, I spend a long day today on Twitter discussing the accuracy of the Gospels. This is my largest point of evidence for the existence of God. Bello are two key points in the accuracy of the Gospels. Point one, the Gospels were written by either eyewitnesses or by people who were told what happened by eyewitnesses. I don't even need point, three, point two. I'm done with point one. The Gospels were written. I'll grant you that much. There is a book. There are philosophers who could, you know, there's there's philosophers who could question the existence of anything, of, of nothing. Every, you know, they, I'm not going to go there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to grant you that much. The Gospels were written. There is a book called the Holy Bible, and it's got it's a collection of books that the Roman Catholic Church uh, purloined over a period of time. There's also books that were not included in the New Testament that the Roman Catholic Church opted to omit. So we're only getting part of the story, all right? But there's a book, and it's called the Holy Bible, and it was written. I'm not going to argue with you on that point. The Gospels were written. Okay, the part I will argue with you on is by either eyewitnesses or by people who were told what happened by eyewitnesses. This, this brings me to this point. <sighs> there's three different kinds of information. There's primary, secondary, and tertiary information. Primary information. I witness an event. I'm at the side of the road and an auto accident occurs right in front of me and it happens to me. Inside my head, I've got, I've now got primary information to an event. Secondary information. Some reporter rushes up to me and asks me to tell him what I saw. When I tell him what I saw, that is secondary information. I know that for, with everything in my, every fiber of my being, I'm going to be 100% true and accurate. I'm going to tell this guy everything that I, as I remember it, as it occurred to me. Meanwhile, on other intersections, other people also witness the event. And that same reporter is going to go over to them and ask them the same question. What did you see? And they're going to give him their primary information. He's going to take all that information back to his uh, studio and try to make sense out of the auto accident for his news show the following day. He's got, at best, secondary information in his video. And he's going to splice it all together and try to make a story out of it. And when he presents it to the general populace, that is tertiary information. He's got all this information, came from primary sources. He's the secondary source. When he gives it to someone else, they have tertiary information. You can't prove jack crap with that. I'm sorry, you can't. You just can't. So you can claim, even if, and I don't do this, but even if I were to grant you that the Bible consists of primary um, source material, that, that the people who wrote it literally or were either the, the, the individual that experienced it themselves or people who were scribes that were writing down eyewitness testimony, which when you actually read the Bible, it's not all, it's, it, it doesn't read like that. But even if I were to grant you that, when you read it, it's tertiary information. It's not valid. It's not provable. It's, it's not dependable. I'm sorry. Um, you can jump to that conclusion. And then there, there is evidence to support that, that's, that, that there's even more generations of, of disagreement beyond that. Because as I said, the Roman Catholic Church collected a whole bunch of, of, of books. And what you have before you when you look at the New Testament is a collection, uh, an anthology of the books that they deemed worthy to include. They omitted an awful lot of stuff. There's something called the Apocrypha that the Catholics accept but the Protestants don't. That's just part of the argument. There are even more books that didn't make it at all into the, the Bible that weren't even considered for the Apocrypha. And that story needs to be told, but it's not. Because it disagreed with the agenda that the Roman Catholic Church had at the time. I'm sorry, but I don't even need point two. I disproved you with point one. The Bible does not prove your God exists. You have to believe that the Bible is the word of God. And it's not. It was actually written by men. We know that. We know it was written by people.
It wasn't written by God. Presumably, your God used people like fountain pens, put his words directly into their heads, and made them spew it out like they, like, like they were just fountain pens. It's not how it works. It's not, that's not how inspiration works, and it's certainly not how transcription works. Your God didn't do that, because your God's not there. Sorry. Men wrote the Bible. Men did. And there's no evidence to support that your God did. But there is evidence to support that people did. And people are liars. People make up stuff all the time. So, I'm sorry, but I gave you one shot. I, I told you I'm going to give you one shot, and that this should be interesting. Go ahead and, and show me your proof that your God exists. You showed me your proof, and I just shot it down. So, thanks for playing, but you lose. You fail. Um, welcome to atheism. Next.